Hi everybody, welcome back to Pelvis Party. My name is Becky Montpetit with Rochester Local and today I am joined by Chris Klingel, urogynecologist at Olmstead Medical Center and Britt Marshall with Marketing and Communications at Olmstead Medical Center. And today we are talking about what in the heck is urogynecology and how does it relate to peeing your pants? Take it away. Take it away. So uh, thank you for uh, yeah. having us here. We're um, happy to have you here. We were yeah. talking about having you on and we were talking, we needed to have a Klingle jingle. We were talking about having a Klingle jingle. Haven't heard of that one. Yeah, I know. Okay. Exactly. So what is urogynecology? So what a urogynecologist is, is um, someone who's trained as either a, a obstetrician gynecologist or a urologist, mm -hmm. but then they also spend extra time training just specializing on the pelvic floor. Okay. So we do a lot in urology, a little in general surgery, a little in gastroenterology, uh, just so we can focus on taking care of the pelvic floor and kind of helping women with those issues. Mm -hmm. So you just see women? Just see women, yes, um, and just focus on those problems. So pelvic floor dysfunction, I suppose that can really run the gamut. So can you give us like a spectrum of maybe what you might see in your practice? Sure, and, and that's a great point. So pelvic floor dysfunction is just a general term. Yeah. So it can mean um, things from urinary incontinence. Mm -hmm. So that's the laugh, cough, sneeze, and you leak, run mm -hmm. after your kids and you leak. Uh, also the gotta go, gotta go, get out of my way, I'm gonna pee my pants. Uh -huh. Now. Not related to the excess coffee that we're drinking and things like that. <laughs> yes. Uh, but this is you're at a game, you're sitting on, you know, watching Yellowstone, and all of a sudden <laughs> you got to pee yeah. and you like have to go now. Mm -hmm. And if you don't get there, you'll start to pee before you get yep. there. Yeah. Yeah. So all along this way, there's all sorts of different things that fall under the umbrella of pelvic floor dysfunction. But we want to talk about today is urinary incontinence. Now we touched on this briefly in a previous pelvic, pelvis party episode, but we wanna go more in depth with you in that. I think it's really interesting, you know, a lot of women will talk about what, when we sneeze, we have to cross our legs, or like we're coughing or laughing or whatever, and we've really normalized that. Yeah, or I talked about my friend who was going to the gym with me and she refused to do the jump rope because she was afraid she was gonna leak. Oh yeah, totally. And it's just become something that once you hit a certain age, it's like, oh yeah, I do this, or it's totally happened. And we've really normalized this. It's kind of a pop culture reference. We all kind of ha 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 laugh about it, but it's actually not great. It's not fun. And what, we don't have to settle for this. So yeah. women are embarrassed to talk about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah totally embarrassed. Be. So it's kind of like one of these things that if we joke about it, then it doesn't have to be serious and we can kind of avoid it, right? Wouldn't you say that's the case? You yeah. just totally avoid, like, avoid, you know, joke about the situation. Yeah. But that's where you come in. Yeah, and it's gotten a lot better. Yeah. Um, I would say, you know, the older generation, it still takes me a while to kind of crack through and get yeah. them to really say what they are there for. Uh -huh. uh, but I think with, you know, modern women and things that are going on, they they're they're much more open to talking about it and getting something done. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I always say if men had this problem, uh, men would be in there the first <laughs> time it happened and be like, what's going on? You Probably. Know, make this stop. Yeah. So, um, you know, it, it's hard. I understand that. Um, I try to make it fun, as fun as you can make yeah. talking about something like that. Uh, and then, you know, kind of, you know, offer all the treatments that we have mm -hmm. and kind of see if we can do something. So, um, speaking of treatments at Olmsted Medical Center, if you see a patient who's really struggling with urinary incontinence and you've had that hard conversation and now it's come to, you know, what do we do about it? So tell us about that then. What do you do about it? Sure. So there's a lot of kind of talking about like what's going on, how long it's been going on, you know, things that have happened, you know, childbirth is a common one mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, this is about about muscles, but it's also about your ligaments and the connective tissue sure. that, that help stop the flow mm -hmm. when you laugh, cough, and sneeze. So, you know, you can do all the pelvic floor muscle exercises that you can, and those are great, but, you know, you can't Kegel and cough or Kegel and run on a treadmill. Right. Um, so that's <laughs> where, you know, you talk about, your, or we kind of 
try to figure out what exactly is going on. And then there are, you know, surgeries that can help kind of give you a little more support. Mm -hmm. You know, I call it a speed bump. Oh. So like then when you're running, there's something there that's going to kind of help keep that urethra closed so gotcha. you don't leak when you strain, mm -hmm. jump, cough, sneeze, things like that. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty normal though for after childbirth. I mean, okay, let's just recognize that you're you just push something yes. huge out of the area yeah, uh -huh. and it's stretched. That's normal, and it's normal to take some time to go back to the way it was. But where does it become an issue? Yeah, so that's so that's a big point or great point. So um, also, it's the makeup of your body. Yeah. So I use my mom as an example. Um, had six kids, was on her feet, uh, lived to be eighty-five, didn't leak an ounce. Huh. And then I would say, well done. Well done. <laughs> uh, but I've also seen the 21 year old after her first baby uh -huh. who, like, almost walking or stepping up a curve will leak. Huh. So that, uh, you know, that goes into more of, okay, her connective tissue that she inherited from her mom and dad uh -huh. just kind of took more of a hit uh -huh. during childbirth than someone who has great you know, tissue and, yeah. you know, they don't have any problems. Sure. So, you know, that's kind of part of the history. Sure. Um, but we also see a lot of women who haven't had kids. And okay. again, I think it's just their connective tissue, their their lifestyle. And, and again, there are some other kind of uh, bad things we talk about, mm -hmm. you know, smoking affects your connective tissue, mm -hmm. you know, lifelong constipation, which is mm -hmm. another common problem, that kind of constant straining, sure. kind of bearing down, just kind of wears on those pelvic floor ligaments. Gotcha. So there are a lot of factors that can make up this specific diagnosis, urinary yeah. incontinence. Now, I'm fascinated by two sort of options that you have talked about um, when it comes to urinary incontinence. We were talking about them before, and I'm curious to hear more about those. So I assume you're talking about Botox and Bocamed. Yeah. Yep. So so these are two procedures, and they're and what I'll say is you know Botox is the Botox we've all heard about. Yeah. So it paralyzes muscles. Mm -hmm. That's how it gets rid of wrinkles. So the bladder is a big muscle. So we can inject uh, small concentrations of Botox into the bladder muscle, and it just takes the oomph out of it. So that's that urgency frequency. Mm -hmm. You know, you're in line. You're at what at, at the mall at a movie mm -hmm. and you gotta go gotta go well it just kind of lessens that oomph so you're like okay uh i can wait yeah till i get there that type of thing gotcha which is different than the stress incontinence again i kind of say like a leaky washer mm -hmm. so it's not that you have a strong urge it's that there's there's a force a cough a sneeze yeah. and that pressure gets transmitted and the urethra can't stay closed so um, first I'll touch on, there are um, non-surgical things. Um, one thing I talk a lot about is what's called called poise impressa. Okay. So poise pads, you know, heard yep. of those. So the poise impressa uh, is, is like a tampon device, mm -hmm. but the design of it um, kind of springs open and kind of forms a little speed bump. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, a lot of times you'll hear women will come in and say, if I wear a tampon, my stress incontinence is better. Not oh. not for all women, but for some. And I think that's probably where that came from. Uh -huh. And so there are not non-surgical things like that. So that's, you know, a lot of women who, you know, work out and only leak when they really work out, uh -huh. they love that. Sure. Because you can put it in, you can wear it, you can work out. You can take it out when you're done. Mm -hmm. um, those that have, you know, bothered more throughout the day, then we start talking about, you know, the little um, minor procedures. One I would say is, you know, this new Bulkamed. So the best way I kind of explain it, it's kind of like a lip filler. Okay. Been around for a hundred years, believe it or not. Okay. Yeah. Now the 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 issue was there was never a material that worked well. Okay. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll use an analogy and this may be bad, but like the flat tire, you buy the little stuff in a can uh -huh. and you spray it in there and it kind of... Expands. Yes. All right. So... I'm tracking. tracking. I'm tracking. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so this new product, Bulkamed, uh, is a material that we can, you know, through a little tiny needle in the office, we can inject around the urethra 
and does the same thing. And the thing about Bulkamed is that it stays. So other products would uh, dry out over time uh -huh. or they wouldn't stay. But this Bulkamed, which is mostly water, is kind of a gel and it forms this kind of kind of cushion bumper uh -huh. and then your body grows into it. So now you have a little bit more resistance and you know helps that leaking. Fascinating. Yeah. And something can be done in the office. Literally, I say once we get set up and going, it takes about two minutes. Um, my analogy is, is like going to a dentist. Uh -huh. I hate dentists. Yeah. No, I'm sorry yeah. if there's any dentist out there. <laughs> I love my dentist, by the way. She's awesome. <laughs> but yes, there's a little needle stick and it's like, oh, okay, ouch. But then it's like done. And uh, they also, you can walk out of the office and could go to your kid's soccer game and cheer on the sides. Immediately. No yes. downtime. No. Well, well not. real strenuous activity. Yeah. So I say don't run. Don't sure. don't go do your kickboxing for uh -huh. a day or two. Okay. But that's about it. But that's about it. That's about it. That's well, and like a um, lip filler, though, like your example. Is I don't there, know much about lip fillers. Is but. there maintenance? So, so good point. Yeah, good question. Uh, and I don't know about lip filler maintenance. So, but <laughs> there. So, um, you know what the studies show, which uh, again are out of Europe, where a lot of these things come from, is over the course of ten years, um, you know, fifty percent of women may need a touch up, and that may be what you're talking okay. about with the lip filler. Yeah. So we do it once. We typically wait a month, see how they're doing, and and I mean, literally, you can do it more and more uh -huh. but but most women only need one or two injections but you know down the road five years six years yeah you can do it again interesting um, and the other thing that we talk about um is it's you know if you're had your second kid you may or may not want a third or fourth mm -hmm. it is something you could do in between oh where you know doing something like a sling procedure which is a little more invasive yeah. in the operating room most of us would say, yes, we can do it. Might not recommend it if you really feel strong that you're going to have more kids because uh -huh. it, it might disrupt it enough okay. that it might not work as well after, okay. you know, after but the next kids. But it's worth checking about. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think like that knowing your options is so important and having this understanding that there are are things that you can do and as we say don't settle you don't have to settle for being leaky or joking about it with your friends so it's really wonderful to have you here to explain these things for us on the pelvis party and if people want to know more information about urogynecology and connecting with uh, Dr. Klingle you can go to rochesterlocal.com for more information and Thank you, Britt, and thank you, Dr. Klingle, for being here today, and we will see you next time on Pelvis Party. Thanks for having us.